Welcome everybody, this is Jay Bussell. Excited to talk to you again. Hopefully you will be uh, enlightened. I'm sure you will be. Today's uh, webinar is exciting for me because I've got one of our subject matter experts, uh, Amy Krulowitz, who is in business development and graphics and is an awesome trainer. And uh, we're gonna talk a lot about the best heat press for dye sublimation. We get a lot of questions at Equipment Zone about heat presses. Uh, we do resell them, um, and so Amy is going to shed some light on what we need to know about heat presses and the relationship that they have with dye sublimation. So Amy, thank you for joining us. How are you today? I'm very well, Jay. Thank you, and thank everyone for, for joining us at this uh, webinar. Um, I am in uh, sunny New Jersey in my, in my home office. And Jay is in our Phoenix office, and um, with the beauty of technology, we can bring this to you today. Yeah, perfect. We are excited, and it's going to be your show. So take it away, Amy. Tell us what we should do and what we should know. And uh, if a few questions pop in, I will uh, gently remind you and interrupt, but uh, we want to make sure that we can cover the time uh, or watch the time and make sure you can cover the material. So take it away. Super. Okay. And remember that we do have time for questions and answers at the end. So if anyone does have a question, please submit them and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. So we're here to talk about choosing the right heat press for dye sublimation. And as you can see, uh, this first slide has all kinds of different types of heat presses. So it can be daunting when you're trying to figure out what you need. I'm going to try to help demystify that a little bit. Basically, you want to talk about three areas, the space you have, the budget you have, and the applications. And when you know those three, the answers to those three questions, it will pretty much round out the type of product that's best for you. First, though, before we do that, I'd like us to review dye sublimation very briefly. So we talk about the dye sublimation process. This is important to know because when you understand what happens in dye sublimation, you understand why the heat press is such an important piece of that process. The, um, the process of dye sublimation is printing ink on paper, okay? It's a transfer paper. And what happens is it gets mated together with polyester um, and that's how the transfer takes place. But it comes out of a printer ink on paper first, and it's in a mirrored image, so it's backwards reading. Then what you're going to do is you're going to apply heat and pressure with a heat press with the particular product that you're using. Now, that product can be polyester fabric, but it can also be a ceramic plate, it can be a mug, it can be a piece of metal, and it can be a piece of wood essentially anything as long as it is coated with that polymer to accept this product. What happens during the heat transfer is the ink that's on that piece of paper turns into a gas. And the gas actually dyes the polymer on the hard substrates or the fibers on the polyester fabric, making it permanent. So you're literally dyeing the product you're not laying ink on top of it like some of the other processes are done. This is embedding itself into that polymer or that fabric. Um, and that's how the uh, dye sublimation process works. So you can see why heat is such an important part of the system. And because of that, we're gonna talk about the requirements for successful heat transfer. Firstly, temperature is so important. If it's too long, you're going to get issues. If it's not long enough, you'll get issues. So you've got to figure out the right temperature matched with the right time and the right pressure. All three work together to give you a successful heat transfer. Uh, for instance, um, some items require more time, lower temperature. Some require a much shorter time with a high temperature. But no matter what, the pressure on that heat press is really key. It has to be consistent. 
Now, these, these three items can change depending upon the product that you're trying to transfer. And we can talk about that in greater detail if you like, or I'd be happy to answer any questions one-on-one -on -one at another time about this. But we will talk about the types of heat presses. So they're categorized. I like to categorize them as a swing away heat press. And essentially, all that means is that the top of the heat press literally swings to the right uh, to allow you to place your item on the platen, and then it swings back into place to allow you to make the, the press, and swings back out again for you to remove your product. Basic swing away. A flatbed generally moves either side by side or in and out the heat press. And those are reserved for the larger sizes because obviously it would be very difficult to swing away something quite so big um, as the photos that you see here on this slide. Uh, calendar heat press is using, um, it's using, um, it's almost like a web press. It has rollers and those rollers actually turn as the material and the fabric that you're pressing mate together. So that is a very different type of heat press. And we'll talk about each one of these in more detail. And of course, the mug press. The mug press is kind of its own category, but if I were to call it anything, I'd, I'd call it closer to a swing away in that when you're done pressing, it pulls back to allow you to take your mug out. So we'll talk about the swing away entry levels. Now, the reason I categorize it as entry level is because it is a low cost investment for you. And it's great for beginners. Um, for the amount that you're investing, you're getting a whole lot of work done and you can make money. And it's also a very good stepping stone. It gives you a sense of what the system is all about. And very often customers start with a swing away entry level, and then they move up as their business grows or as they decide to take on um, additional products that require a bigger piece of equipment. But these are terrific for keychains and coasters and socks, and of course mugs with the mug press. The uh, DC-16 on top is a 16 by 20 inch platen. Um, and by the way, when I say platen, for those of you who aren't familiar with the lingo, the platen is the hard surface where the heat actually um, does the transfer for you. So that is a 16 by 20 platen. The DK20S is, is all, I'm sorry, the DC16 is a 14 by 16 inch platen. The DK20S is the 16 by 20 inch platen and that swings away to the right to make it a lot easier. And then the mug press. So these are, these are priced, you know, between $750 and $1,500. Very affordable. Now, a lot of customers want to know, well, you know, what type of printer works best with what type of heat press? And we talked about space and we talk about um, applications, and then we talk about budget. So in this world, the small swing away, as you can see, you don't need a lot of space. Uh, the Epson F570 printer is 24 inches wide. It sits on a desktop and it mates beautifully with that 14 by 16 heat press or 16 by 20 heat press or mug press. Um, small investment, small footprint, and the applications are perfect for keychains and coasters um, and mugs and socks and the like. The Epson F6370 on the right there is 44 inches wide and it is a standalone uh, and it, it is on wheels so it could be moved if need be. This is for a higher production and even though you could still use those small swing aways to do socks um, and coasters and keychains. This is designed for people who want to be making instead of two or four or six at a time, maybe they want to make 20 at a time. And then just use the heat press over and over again to get into more of a uh, production mode. But we'll talk now a little bit about the swing away advanced. These are what I call the larger volume. Um, and they allow you to gang up small items because the beds are bigger. 
um, also allowing you to do these all over shirts that are very, very popular. So uh, the heat press on the left is called the DK25 SP. That is a 20 by 25 inch bed, as we call it, and it is a swing away. The other two that you see there, the DK32 AP, is actually 26 by 32 inches. And what's nice about this unit is that you can press something that's up to two inches. So if you're doing wood, which is very popular, uh, two inch thick wood pieces for photography, this would work beautifully with that. The one in the back is called the 394 Twin Shuttle, and this is very productive. It is 20 by 25 inches. Now, when you're pressing on one, you can be setting up, you can be setting up your next, um, your next run, so to speak. The um, thing I want you to notice about all three of these. Someone's calling in to buy one, yeah, I think, Amy. They're they so are. excited. That they are. That they are. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of webinars. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> so all three of these heat presses are called pneumatic, meaning they use um, they use air compressors because in this size, it's very very difficult for you to manually pull down the top of a heat press. Um, so these use air compressors to automatically bring that top down of the heat press important because it, it takes away the stress from your body, but also important because you know you're going to get very good vacuum and very good overall pressure. So that's why we call these the advanced swing away. Amy, someone chimed in on the, on the chat and asked, does the twin shuttle, is it the, is it the bed below that moves back and forth or is it the head on top that moves back and forth? Oh, that's a great question. I guess it's, it's a little hard to see. If you look at the twin shuttle, you see two little handles sticking up, one on oh, the yeah. very right, one on the very left. And you will actually slide that under the head. The head doesn't move. So Perfect. you will slide that under the head. None of the heads move in these, by the way. It's always okay. the bent. That same person was asking about the lower right hand. Does that white square slide under? Is that what moves back under the heating? Exactly. Okay. That's the platen, and that goes right underneath. So again, the heads do not move. That's a, that's a super question. Okay. So we'll go over to the next. So when we talk about advanced swing away, um, the advanced swing aways can be used for any of these printers. Um, the um, Epson 570, again, even though this is a desktop beginner printer, what you can do with it is you can put your coasters in a jig or your keychains in a jig. And what a jig is basically is a cutout, which allows you to do multiple of the same thing at once. So here you could make eight coasters at once um, in one of those advanced, uh, like that swing, like that twin shuttle would be perfect because you can be making eight coasters and while that's pressing, you could be setting up another eight coasters in another jig. Oh yeah, I get back it. Back and perfect. forth and back and forth. Yeah. You know, and in no time, you can make hundreds of them. So that makes it very productive. Um, the 6370 um, shows these shirts. Well, this is perfect for all over shirts because you can use the 44 inch paper, but the all over shirts sometimes based on the size, can be, you know, 24 by 30. Um, good for kids' shirts, too. The 7200 is a very um, big and advanced um, Epson printer, and this is perfect for those throw blankets. So um, a 20 by 30 custom throw blanket can be, print, can be pressed very easily on the DK2632, um, 2632, but printed very quickly and with great quality off the 7200. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention was that we, we're showing the George Knight heat presses here. Um, George Knight is, is a company out of uh, New England. It is a family owned business. They manufacture everything right up there in Massachusetts. And they're a great company to work at. Everything in the USA, they have great warranty on their equipment. And they're there to help you and answer any troubleshooting questions that you might have. It is our preferred line of heat presses. 
Um, there are many different brands of heat presses in the marketplace, and maybe we'll get to that a little later. But I did want to give a shout out to a G Geo Knight. And speaking of shout out, I'm going to show you this video. This is um, the large flatbed video. This is called the Maxi Press Air. And what we're going to show you right now is how this operates. And you'll see this is a shuttle. This one has top and bottom heat. So you will be able to do a two-sided shirt at the same time. And that happens to be Aaron Knight right there of Geo Knight. He's making a sandwich. He's got his craft paper on the bottom, dye sublimation print, his shirt, another dye sublimation print, and another piece of craft paper. He's making what I like to call the dye sub sandwich. He's sliding that shuttle. You see, this is a twin shuttle, sliding it right in. The difference here is that this is a 45 second press time. During that 45 seconds, both top and bottom of that shirt are being pressed. So he is now making an all over shirt in a very short period of time. Automated, vacuum is perfect, pressure is right, and you're ready to go. And that's the large flatbed. That's called the maxi press. A die sub sandwich. I love that. I love that, That's right? Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> die sub sandwich. What would you use a large flatbed for? Well, any of these printers from Epson. The F6330, a 6370 at 44 inches wide, perfect for metal, perfect for Chromalux metal and photography. And that flatbed heat press is gives great, great results. The 7200 at 64 inches, again, great for baby blankets and other items. The um, Epson 9470 and 9470H, which has the new fluorescent pink and fluorescent yellow inks. Those are perfect for the cut and sew world and also for making, um, you know, different types of bolts of fabric. But this is all for cut and sew patterns. Any of these printers would mate beautifully with that Geo Knight Maxi Press. So now we're going to talk about the calendar heat press. This is a very high volume heat press designed for fashion, uh, meaning you can make bolts of fabric with this. Cut and sew, so you can do all kinds of patterned items already on a, a large bolt of fabric and go right to your, your sewers. Um, soft signage is very, very big now. You go to the trade shows and you see all the signs out there on fabric and you see those stretchy table skirts. Um, you go to the outside of stores and you see these little flags hanging in the wind there, blowing in the wind. All this soft signage is done with calendar heat presses. Why? Because it's continuous. You can go as long as you need to go and you can go as wide as you need because a calendar heat press comes in many different widths. It comes in 50 inches, 60 inches, 120 inches. So whatever your needs are, there is a calendar heat press of that size. Let's take a look at this. Now, as you can see, it's going very slowly. You can barely see it move. Now, if you look, I'm gonna use my mouse to show you. This is the paper that came off of the dye sublimation printer. This is the fabric, and they are what you call webbed together so that when they come into the, into the heat press right about here, they go through a series of heat rollers and they get transferred that way using heat. And then the excess that comes down there, that is your final product. And then the excess paper goes out the back way. So that's how a calendar heat press works. Instead of the air compressors, they use an oil heated drum to make uh, the pressure right and to give you the right heat. So it's a whole different technology, but it is designed for um, very high volume work. And these are some examples of what you can do with that calendar heat press and the Epson printers that are great mates to them. So you have the Epson Shore Color 6370, again at 44 inches. Um, you can put a take up roll on that and just roll up the paper as you print it and then take it over to that calendar heat press. The 7200 and the other two 9470 models all have take up reels standard. 
So that paper can be rolled right up onto a reel and that reel gets connected right onto that calendar heat press to allow you to transfer these types of items, bolts of fabric, cut and sew for fashion and athletics, and of course your soft signage. So let's do a quick review and then we'll see if there are any questions, Jay. Yep. Um, on the top left, we've got the very basic entry levels. We have our mug press for one, one mug at a time. And, and note that if you're just getting started, this mug press is perfect. A mug can take three to four minutes to transfer. So this is not for production, but this is for someone who wants to get started and be, be able to make mugs for customers in addition to some other items where they may have that DK20S, a 16 by 20 heat press. So those two items together are perfect for an entry level dye sublimation company. Then you have the 394 twin shuttle, and you saw in the, um, in the video of the larger maxi press how that works. You just push it over and it does its pressing and then you're setting up for your next one on the other side and then you push that over. So this is great for productivity. If you're doing um, small all over shirts, you wanna gang up socks, you're doing coasters, anything where you wanna do multiples. And that DK32, also is terrific for 26 by 30, which is great for shirts. It's also very good because you can put up to something two inches thick in there. So if you're doing those wood panels or ceramic plates or anything that's, uh, that's thick, this is the perfect unit for that. And then the maxi press. Now this is 32 by 42 inches. It also comes in a 44 by 64 inch size and it goes even bigger from there. So these are all different items that will allow you to get the job done and, and make money. Amy, we had two questions come in about, well, I guess they're related again, but the, I know in the video you explained that the Maxi was, had heating elements both from the bottom and from the top. Uh -huh. But is that also true with the, the white press, the DK32? No, the DK32 uh, is just a single platen. Okay. That's a single platen heat press. However, they, um, there are some of the other heat presses, you can add uh, a double platen as well. But if you're doing double platen work, you wanna go with that maxi. So let me, if I could just take one minute, I wanna, I wanna tell the audience, share some personal experience with the mud press. I, I, I can't remember how much there, and you can tell me in a minute, but I remember I've had one, I've had two or three actually, and I've actually owned that exact press, that little Geonite. Mm -hmm. press. And I used it all the time and I used it mostly for marketing purposes. Um, if I was doing any networking, any conferences or had an important meeting, I was, I was really crafty at figuring out how to, how to create something for that person I was going to meet. Mm -hmm. And it, it completely changed the environment of our meetings. It was always a, beyond an icebreaker. It was like a relationship builder. And so I would make something personal for them, personalize it to them. I would never put my name or my logo on it. I always made it for the other person. And uh, that, that three to five minutes, if I remember right, pressing that mug was, was worth thousands. If, if, it, if it was a six or $700 mug press at the time, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I'm telling you it, it earned me tens of thousands of dollars of business by surprising and delighting somebody with a mug and I would fill it up with something fun and put my card in it and just say, you know, Hey, thought of you. And I wanted to make a difference and stand out. So I'm a big fan of the mug press. Yeah, that's a great story. You know, how many of us have something on our own office desks that someone gave us personalized yep. candy jars, uh, you know, photo frames, mugs, yeah. whatever it was, it was and something that was a leave behind that always yep. makes us think of those, of those companies. And if you put their name on it, they're never going to throw it away because it's got their name on it. So it's like <laughs> you've guilted them into keeping it. <laughs> it's like throwing away a photo. You just can't throw away photos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, and, the, and you know, it's interesting because between the mug press and the DK20, the, the cost, it's so cost effective to use that as a way to market your own business. So let's say you are in, um, you want to get into Chromalux, which is the, the metal photographic pieces, but you want to get into, you know, doing 30 by 40. Well, with your DK20S, you can make metal keychains. 
You can make a jig of metal keychains and you can give those out to your customers as samples of what could be done on a larger scale. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that brings us to any questions, Jay? Yes, there were a couple of questions. Here's one right now about electrical. Any requirements that need to be planned out? Uh, we didn't really talk about that. And somebody asked about, I'm not an electrician, so I don't know what 110 means, but somebody asked about that. Okay, that's a great question because the larger these heat presses get, the more sophisticated electrical they require. So here's a good, here's a good rule of thumb. Anything up to a 16 by 20 heat press, you plug in the wall. Anything over that is going to require um, a, a, either a dedicated line or a special plug, generally okay. a dedicated line. So we have, we can guide you um, when you're ready and we start talking about a specific heat press, we will be able to provide you with, with all of the electrical information you need, what kind of a plug, what the NEMA is. See, NEMA is something I learned a long time ago. When um, equipment does not ship with a plug, you have to have an electrician put one on. And the NEMA is the actual number and design of that plug. But we can help you with all that. Great. Sounds like you know what you're talking about, because I certainly don't. Um, the next question was, what about these... <laughs> the person wrote cheap. What about these cheap presses I see online for under 500 bucks on Amazon and so forth? Now, I, I have personally seen these. They seem to come in bright colors, pink and green and orange. Amy, what's your takeaway on these, uh, quote, cheap presses? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The, I get questions about people when, I, when we're talking and I say, they say, I have a heat press already because they're ready to buy a dive sublimation printer. Right. I say, great. What do you have? And they'll put the phone down. Let me, I'll be right back. And they come back and they say, it's orange. So <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to know what that is. It's orange. It's not a brand name. It's just no, orange. It's orange. But it's I will great. tell you um, something I learned a long time ago, and I'm sure many of you have heard this phrase. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So how could it possibly be that a $300 or $500 flat heat press, swing away heat press, could give you good consistent temperature throughout, programmable, allow you to get great pressure and adjust that pressure, mm -hmm. and be able to adjust time? Now remember, you're going to be pressing more than one of the same item. You may want to press coasters on one day and socks on another day. Well, you're going to need different pressure, different time, and probably a little bit different temperature. You want a heat press that's programmable, number one, and also that is built to last. And one of the reasons we like the George Knight heat presses so much is they are solid. And by the way, if you can pick up your heat press, your, your 16 by 20 heat press with one arm, that's not the right heat press for you. You need a heavy heat press. Yeah, I was thinking about what you said with Geo Knight that, you know, who are you going to call? I mean, these things are built to last, but occasionally you're going to need some help. You might, you might, something, something could go wrong. I mean, it's equipment, it happens, but I, I would much prefer to speak to somebody that's in, in my same time zone or at least the U.S., who I could speak English to, who's going to actually have parts and answers and, you know, be able to work with me. So, I don't know. I'm a big fan of, of Geonite too. And, and yeah. I just think it's funny when people think they're saving money and maybe they did in the short run, but in the long run, it always, always bites them. And, and what I always like to say, the first thing I'll talk to, to a customer about when we're talking about dye sublimation, I tell them the heat press is the most critical yeah. part. Do not try to skimp on your heat press. Yeah, you <laughs> need that you want to try to skimp on, on the blanks that you buy, you might be able to overcompensate, you know, by printing out, you know, better prints on your Epson printer and everything, but don't skimp on your heat press. Yeah, I was at a trade show, Amy, and, and it, in fact, was, was talking to Geo Knight, and they were showing us with a, they had a particular type of, uh, like, a laser heat thermometer, some kind of gun that they were able mm -hmm. to point, and they were able to show edge-to-edge -edge consistency, top to bottom, side to side, that consistency in the heat, like, it, it, it barely dropped three degrees 
from and the center out. that is so important. And, yeah, and then they showed, they showed a different press. It was, I don't remember, it wasn't necessarily orange, but it was <laughs> definitely an import press. And uh, the, the range was between 25 and 35 degrees in some areas. Oh my, that's, that's, that is destined for, for unsu no success. You yeah, have you're going to get con inconsistent results. That'll right? be a nightmare for you. Yeah. Because you're, not, you're going to spend so much time trying to troubleshoot why it didn't come out right. So as I said, you must have even temperature. And yes, there is a uh, laser that you could buy where you could test the heat temperature. And there are also what they call paper thermometers. Hmm. Um, and I can, I can help get you some info on those as well. And that's another way that you test the temperature. Well, that leads to our last question, which, which was about time and temperature. And uh, they asked about how do you low, is it experience or is there a chart? How do you know the different temperatures, times and pressures for different media and different products? So the answer to that is yes and yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, manufacturers are very good in giving you tech sheets to help you get started. Uh, Chromalux and Unisub, which are essentially the same company, different divisions. Unisub is the company for your coasters and your keychains and your, your plastics um, and those types of products. And Chromalux is the name for your metals um, you can also get wood from them. And each one of them, they, they all have their own properties. And um, the Chromalux um, and Unisub are wonderful when it comes to spec sheets. You can look it up online. They tell you what time and what temperature as starting points for each particular product. And, you know, understand every heat press is going to be a little different. So it will still um, require a little extra testing, but it's a great starting point on all of that. You know, when it comes to fabric, fabric is so different. Um, you know, in, in our certified solution center, we've worked with uh, polyester chiffon, um, satin, lycra, uh, jersey, um, and um, athletic netting, athletic mesh. Mm -hmm. Each one of them is a little different. They have their own properties. Yeah, okay. Um, and you do have to, again, you're going to start at a certain point, and then you're going to learn how to adjust that. And we at Equipment Zone would be very happy to help work with you on that. Our probably help desk be, is there for you. Probably be a good reason to do two things. One, do some testing before, so have some extras or extra material. And two, stop by and visit Amy once we can get through this uh, temporary setback of people being bunkered down and, and staying at home like, like you are. But once we get past this is to come by and visit and see all of these amazing presses. We have yep. many of them. And, uh, and practice some prints with you in our... Uh, Solution Center, right? Absolutely. We have what's called Lunch and Learn. And we have been doing that the first Wednesday of every month. Of course, we've had to put it on hold for a while. Don't pause, but, but we, we'll get we back to it. We've our Lunch and Learn. And, and it's a great opportunity. If you're within 150 miles, come on up. Uh, you can spend as much time as you need with us. Um, you can see all the equipment we have. You can experiment. You can learn about the, the, the nibs and nabs of everything, you know, we've got our, our demonstration people are there, our technical people are there, and we even bring in lunch. Yeah. So we have a great day and we learn a lot. Well, that's a great offer that uh, I, wish I, I wish I lived closer. It's going to be a little bit further for me, 150 <laughs> mile radius, but uh, Amy, I might do it. I just might do it. But. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up. We appreciate those questions. Thank you so much for those of you who participated. There were so many of you that were eager to learn more about heat presses and which heat press is best for which printer. Amy, you did a fabulous job. You answered so many great questions and I can see your information is at the bottom. Is there anything you wanna add or, or conclude with? Well, I just wanna add that, you know, we at Equipment Zone are, are ready to help you with your dye sublimation system. We are what you want to call cons consultative salespeople, meaning we'll sit down with you and talk about what it is you want to achieve and where you want to take your business. And we'll help you develop a plan, a plan of equipment, a plan of marketing, and a way to go forward that makes sense for everyone. Perfect. All right. Well, then with that, we will say goodbye and end our webinar. Goodbye, okay. everybody. Thanks, everyone.